This is Tim Gallagher of the Sioux City Journal. I'm in Sheldon, Iowa, speaking with uh, Bob Hogaveen of uh, Sheldon, who was a member of the U.S. Marine Corps and served in Korea. Uh, Bob, what was your length of service? Well, give me the dates. Yes, I entered the service in August 1953 and discharged in August 1955. When you went in in 1953, were you just out of high school? Yes, actually, I enlisted in March of that year when I was still 17, and uh, but I delayed the entry until August, uh, so I was just out of high school, yes. When did you arrive in country? I wrote, In Korea, I arrived in December of 1953. First impressions of the country? Well, the shocking thing was I didn't know about the starvation. And the shocking thing for me was the, uh, the death and starvation and the total collapse of that country. Uh, I, we had no training of that, and that was a shocking reality to me to see starving people. Your, uh, what, was, what did your duty comprise? What was it comprised of? The 1st Marines were located across the uh, Imjin River on, right against North Korea, right on the, what we now call the DMZ or the 38th Parallel. Our job was very simple to stop the tanks. We, we thought they were coming. The uh, ceasefire had been signed, but our training was it was just a matter of not if but when. And so we would be the first line when the tanks came and we were to stop the tanks before they crossed the river. Did you see much, you know, real, real difficult, dangerous duty? Did the tanks come? No, they did not come. And uh, it was a, a good thing. But we really thought we were prepared, but truthfully, no, I have not seen any active combat duty, did not. You came back, you served as a teacher, uh, went on into administration. You helped, What? Uh, tell me the facility and the business that you started here or helped start here at Sheldon. In 1975, I was a high school principal here in Sheldon, and uh, we, we heard about it, sort of a long story, but we heard about a facility that served people with disabilities, and we really wanted to look into that. And so through the work of some friends, we, I got a year of uh, sabbatical leave to start this project, then called Handicap Village. I found after uh, about five, six months and really studying and learning, I wasn't able to go back to education as much as I wanted to. I frankly felt God driven to stay with and do something of purpose and privacy and dignity of human beings with disabilities. And so over the next 25 years, we. Uh, did that here in Sheldon, and we did it in Lake City, we did it in Omaha and, and in Sioux City. Uh, so that was the work that we worked, that we dealt with. And then later in your life, you actually had the opportunity to return to Korea. We did that, and I and found out accidentally about uh, the 60th anniversary. So in 2010, I returned to Korea at the South Koreans' invitation, and they treated us, and very simply, the whole program was saying, thank you, thank you, thank you to Americans to have come to a country you didn't know to save people you had never met and will never forget what you've done. And so they brought us back for a whole week of saying thank you and showed us an unbelievable experience. So even though it's, you know, kind of maybe unfairly referred to as the forgotten war here in the U.S., it is anything but forgotten in that, Korea, South Korea? Yeah, that's really my story now, and I love to tell it because here's a a country that's the seventh largest economy in the world and people live with freedom and democracy and 70% of the people are Christians. And right across that line, in that country, they have a country of North Korea that's total darkness and death and 100,000 Christians locked up in prison. You've got two different worlds today. This isn't 50, 60 years ago. That's today. It's happening. Only because America came that this is true. Thank you for sharing your story, Bob. Thank you.